like us birds need to um, uh, stabilize their head in space in order to stabilize the image of the world on their retina. And when walking, they do this by intermittently keeping their head still and uh, thrusting their head forward, as shown in this video. And uh, well, this is the footfall pattern of a walking bird with single and double support faces. And we call the uh, redefine the hold phase when the bird is keeping its head stationary and the thrust phase when the bird is moving its head. And uh, experimentally, it has been found that this thrust phase occurs uh, around double support. And um, that's principally not necessary because you could sh um, conceivably shift the phasing of this thrust phase in any way with respect to the gate cycle. So I can thrust my head forward during the double support, but also during single support or any other timing. The only constraint is that my head travels uh, the same distance as my body during one step. So the question is, what is special about trust uh, during double support? And um, birds are complicated, so we're going to try to address this question in a simple model. And we draw inspiration from the literature, of course. So uh, uh, Max and Art showed that uh, collision cost is a major determinant of energetic cost of walking. But by cleverly choosing your push-off timing and magnitude, you can reduce these collision costs. And uh, Andy Ruina and Gomes uh, took that idea a step further and showed that in a model with distributed mass, it's even possible to have a collisionless gait completely, even when going um, on level ground. OK, so the question is, can walking birds reduce their energetic cost by cleverly timing their head pop, as inspired by Gomes and Ruina? So we're going to model the bird as a rimless uh, wheel, which is an inverted pendulum with a fixed step length, with a point mass head. And the head is constrained to only move in the horizontal direction, which basically makes it a lip model. So the whole uh, bird is actually a descriptive hybrid uh, ip-lip or hip-lip model. <laughs> so the model has uh, uh, gravity acting on it. <laughs> And uh, ground reaction forces, external forces, and there are internal forces in the massless neck, which acts as an actuator. And uh, uh, the model is driven by an impulsive push-off uh, followed by a collision. And push-off and collision only affect the kinematics of the pelvis, but not of the head. So the plan is to simulate for a given uh, head velocity profile, but different forward thrust timings, uh, this model. So we're going to shift this forward thrust timing. And this is an uh, animation of how this looks. So here we have the hold phase, and now it's thrusting its head forward, and hold phase again, etc. And for this simulation, we're going to evaluate the um, energetic cost of this walking pattern. So here is neck power as a function of time for the previous simulation. And we can parse this into a positive part and a negative part. And apart from uh, the neck doing work, there's, of course, also push-off and collision. So we can graph that similarly. And now we're going to take this data from this graph into a new graph, which has on the y-axis the work done per step. And on the x-axis, it has forward trust timing. So these two points are the push-off and uh, collision work done from the previous simulation. And this is the positive and negative network. And now you can uh, conceivably change the forward trust timing and calculate all those variables again in another, so this is, here it's changed in a positive direction, or you can change it in the negative direction. And you can change it any way you like, and then you get a curve. So this is forward trust timing against work per step. And then we see that there's a minimum in this curve in both the positive neck work and the push-off work at the trust timing that is um, right before double support, or right before the step-to-step -step transition. And so, uh, from that, we conclude that it actually makes sense for head bobbing birds to trust their heads forward right before the collision. So you should trust your head forward at this moment. If the bird is accurately described by a hip lip model. And with that, I would uh, like to thank you. And I would like to acknowledge Art Quo, who came up with the idea of this uh, entire thing. <laughs> and I would like to thank my. Uh, uh, but this was in part supported by these people. Thank you. Is the last video uh, energetic? <laughs> <laughs>
I know, but it's very hard to do it right. So I try to do it right, but that's basically. Yeah. All right, Aaron. Uh, so you I was thinking in terms of torque, and when you have two feet on the ground, it's very easy to reject the reaction force, right? So like, and when you're thrusting the head forward, you can have, you have an inertial, equal and opposite pitch okay. on the body. And, I, and I, so, that, so that would be a good time to thrust your head forward when you can kind of stabilize your body with the two feet on the ground. Okay, I, I changed you a little bit because my graphs earlier maybe suggested that um, there isn't, but in, as this is an inverted uh, pendulum thing, there is basically a zero time double support phase. Is that the video of the bird again? Sure. Uh, maybe this is faster. Oh, that's not Another thing is that, so I, I don't know if I part your question completely correctly, but one other thing that's maybe important is that the uh, push up and collision do not affect the kinematics of the head, but only the pelvis. I don't know if that has any bearing on your question. All right, Shana has a question. Yes. Yeah, Sean O'Connor, San Diego State University. So why, why, did, why don't I do this? And it's uh, a general question, and I guess more specifically, uh, what is about the bird that maybe better fits your model than a human or another animal. Why don't I mean, Why don't we see this as universal? Okay, so I would. I think I can answer your question, but the, the person who best can answer your question is John Mattis, because um, so the reason that why don't the reason that <laughs> the reason that why why we don't do this is because if I move my head, I can keep looking at you, and the birds do not have this uh, capability. That's the short answer. Yeah, we have vestibular axial reflex, so we can move our eyes to stabilize the image, but birds' eyes is sort of, I mean, this is my sort of hand wavy thing. Their, their eyes are a larger percentage of their head's mass, and they don't have the, they don't seem to have the ability to move their eyes slowly. So they stabilize their gaze at the head level, and we stabilize our gaze at the eye level. Um, but I don't know if Monica Daly would agree with them. <laughs> yeah, so that's just the other candidate for answering this question. <laughs> reason why it works do it this way, just a suggestion or a mechanism. But I totally agree, there can be many other things that influence the uh, head off time. So if your argument is based on double support, why did you choose a model that doesn't have double support? Well, the argument is not necessarily based on, so the argument is based on the relative phasing with respect to the step to structure transition. And maybe can illustrate it. Uh, well, your first, your first observation, right, was double support seems to be a key. Sure, but uh, so, so the double support in the model is a limit case, let's say. So it's a limit case of double support going into infinitely short time. But so, so I'll, I'll, I'll address your question in a different way. It's conceivable to make a model which does have finite double support, and we would expect similar results in that model. And the reason why I can explain that is, so if you trust mass forward right before you, your foot hits the ground, that basically reduces the velocity of the colliding point, and thereby that's not a completely 100% accurate statement. That's not always true, but by reducing the velocity of the colliding point, you may reduce the energy loss during collision. That's the idea. Next. Uh, what was the magnitude of the effect? How did it depend upon the head mass? 
how much energy savings was it? How did it depend on the head mass? And when are you going to test it experimentally? <laughs> um, so the, uh, well, I don't know by heart. Well, the effect was, um, so the effect on collision cost was quite big. So factor of five or something. But the collision cost was only a small fraction of the total cost. So the neck work was larger than the collision work in this model. So on the ground scale, I think it was only a saving of like 20% or something. So that's major. Yeah, that is. For, for realistic mass distribution. Yeah, that is major. And what, what was your other question? That was a realistic mass distribution? Like the head oh yeah, so, realistic so the, the duration of the head bulb timing. No, no, not duration. The head Mass. I know, I know, but I'm just saying that I'm, I'm preempting another question, and that's that the duration of the head pop time was taken from literature as well as the head mass. Yeah. Okay. And then what's the experimental test? That's a good question. We, uh, I would have to discuss that with Monica. <laughs> so, because it, I think it's very hard to experimentally force the birds to do it something different. I think that's, uh, that's very tricky. That's interesting. That's a good suggestion. Yeah. That's indeed. So when I started reading about this, I realized that some birds don't, which was amazing to me because to me all birds are pigeons. From, from <laughs> <Amsterdam>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I I did think about that actually. So I think that when birds are running, they're basically have no time or maybe their actuator limits so they can't move their head back and forward so fast that with respect to the world their head is actually has a stationary phase during running. So when the mean velocity of the body is very high it's difficult to have a stationary phase basically. I mean they also don't have up when they fly, that's just impossible. Alright, there's uh, one more question. So what do the other birds do in order to stabilize their retinal image? I do not know actually. Sorry, what? I missed that. <laughs> so, okay, okay, I'll, 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 I'll uh, I do know a little bit about this. So, I think that all birds do something like this. So, when they look at you, they sort of keep their head stationary in the little jolts. Um, but not all birds head up, and also when they're running, they don't head up. But I guess that they, at that moment, just don't have an acute vision. So, they cannot discern detail very well, but they will just. I mean, it's not like they cannot see anything when they when their head is moving. Okay, I would take oh, I'm sorry. They're probably using optical flow. Information. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? yeah. I'll take one more question. So why don't I swing my arms forward when I'm walking? Like this? I I could I could conceivably get, gain some energy savings by timing <coughs> both arms swinging forward just before double stance. So why don't I do that? People do do that when they walk slowly. They, they use two arms? It is, no, there's a, it's a, it's a once per step swing forward. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know that, is there experimental evidence of this? Uh, there are papers on, on that. <laughs> there are papers on that. <laughs> I, I don't know why I don't we know don't the do that. Okay, Steve Collins wrote a paper on arm swinging, and he cited something about double uh, arm swinging, and he has a model that demonstrates that passively. So to be honest, I cannot on the fly uh, do the mechanics of this question. So <laughs> I, I would love to talk about it, but I cannot answer the question right now. All right. So uh, let's. I think if I can say one thing. <laughs> Which is that we saw the talk about the. Um, tail model of the tail helping propulsion of the cheetah sure. and then there's haltiers so not for walking but for jumping people do swing their arms to help with jumping so is it, that kind of contribution is there in humans the question is in steady walking is it advantageous and it would be a small effect and then it, it, you would think it would be a twice the frequency of normal walking if you're going to do it every step <laughs> and maybe the arm swing cost out, out, uh, out cost the benefit from the this little thing. Also, he's saying the birds want to bob their heads anyway, 
So they're willing to spend, they're not just doing this to save energy. This is if they're going to bob their heads, when's the best time to do it? So it's a slightly different problem. He didn't say this was more efficient than not bobbing their heads. That's a good point. I guess they're right. Okay, so let's conclude then. Is that cool? Yes. Thank you.